Strider, 126 pounds is coming up next. We have the double A match, the first of the Hamiltons from Emmitsburg. Steve Hamilton, 32 and one, going against Mark Ryland, 29 and four from Eagle Grove, the son of the coach. Marv Ryland. He has two losses to this man. Ryland has been beaten twice by Steve Hamilton, and Hamilton has lost to Ryland once, so it's not like they haven't seen each other before. And it's not like they've really settled anything. No. On well, the matches that they've wrestled, Hamilton, when he's won, has won fairly decisively, and when Ryland won, it was fairly close. So I would imagine in talking to the co to the athletes, the coaches are saying, you know, you, you can beat this guy because you've beaten him bad. Depends on what he's thinking that makes a difference, you know, how it goes. Out they come. And it's going to be the 2A championships. Of course, we have two other weight divisions in the same weight class being wrestled at the same time, and we'll keep an eye on those two. It's kind of interesting that as you watch this match, both coaches feel that the athletes are very good on their feet. That's uh, in the yellow, by the way. That's Emmitsburg, Steve Hamilton, and it's uh, Ryland in the dark. Now up at 1A, we have Jeff Bakken of North Kensett of Northwood against Jeff Schmitz of Gilbertville, Don Bosco. The Gilbertville young man, Schmitz, is going to be on a state championship team. And at 3A, here it is for Dowling. It's on the line. They have to win here by a fall, or Fort Dodge wins the team title. Ken Luton against undefeated Brian Thomas of West Davenport. Big match. Well, the match we're watching is that young Hamilton, Steve Hamilton from Emmitsburg, has over 100 takedowns coming into the state tournament. And you realize that he comes from a, a school where Steve Kerber, a four-time state champion, later an All-American at Iowa University, only had 50-some. So you consider how many takedowns he's had. There's another one. Two to nothing in favor of Hamilton. He had two falls coming into this match in the tournament and a seven to nothing decision. Ryland won three decisions. They were in opposite brackets, obviously, and got, here's the Ryland out. Escape makes it two to one. What's interesting, as they as they go, uh, Coach Ryland, we're watching Mark right here, and it's his father that's the coach. And when I was talking to him about this, turn, this match, he said he felt that his boy really had the ability to be able to put a lot of pressure on young Hamilton. And he and just, he, got, and a he just got a takedown with him. But he, want, but he knows that he's got to put the pressure on him from the up. You see how he just comes in now and picks the knee, bought enough body penetration and to drive him right onto his rear. Three to two is the lead for Ryland. And he's in the top position with about a half a minute to go in the first period. Well, he's, he knows he wants to put a lot of pressure on Steve Hamilton from Emmitsburg. Keep him down, keep him off that top position. That's where Hamilton's very good, the top position, and, uh, and where Ryland has trouble. So he wants to keep the pressure on him here and maybe try to turn him over. That right, goes to the other side, and Hamilton reaches his feet out of bounds. This is the first of the Hamiltons. You'll see Steve Hamilton's brother, Pat Hamilton, undefeated at 132 in our next match. He's going to try to be quick, get to his feet, just like that. That's the best place for him. Get to his feet, fight those arms free, then be able to, to turn himself into an escape. That's the end of the period, just about the time that Hamilton was getting an arm free for a wizard. Well, we're looking at two real prospects here because they're only sophomores. Yes, they, and they're going to meet, see each other and meet each other lots of times before this is over. And you consider that they're sophomores and they're this big, all the way to 126, they're going to be pretty good-sized boys. And they're going to have a lot of tough competition at North Central Iowa District. Now there, Hamilton tried to use a chicken wing, and Ryland just stood up and rotated his arm back and got free for the escape. He leads 4-2. to two. We're back on the feet again in the second period. It's Hamilton of Emmitsburg with the light uniform, Ryland of Eagle Grove in the dark. Now, they both know how to pin. You know, Hamilton's got over 20 falls, and Ryland has, uh, I think, one fall away from the school record, but against each other, the chances are they won't do that. There's that a nice Hamilton. Shot. Deep penetrating shot by Hamilton. Ties the score at four. Four, four. And here's a position he likes. Feels good on top, likes to pull the arms in and get into the bar position. So he can chicken wing those arms and pull them back on the back. 
That's where he feels good about it. Now he might let Ryder just sneak himself out a little bit so that he can use the leg to elevate him, turn him on over to his back with it. A minute two to go in the second period. And it's a tie score. Hamilton of Emmitsburg against Ryland. Here he's in Dino. He just pulls that leg back, a lot of pressure down on the hips in order to knock him back down to the mat. They were in different weight classes as freshmen, generally speaking, at least they were in the state tournament. Hamilton finished fourth at 112, and Ryland finished fifth at 119 last year. Well, he's given him that arm again, or Hamilton's taken it away from him. This is a position that uh, Hamilton is very good at. He puts that, what they call a bar arm, a chicken wing on right on the opposite side, and then uses the half. He can be very good at this. This is how he gets so many falls. Oh, oh. I don't believe he gave him anything on that. He didn't stop it. Now you do have to stop. The official said no back points there. It's still 4-4 with 20 seconds to go. We're keeping our eye on the other matches at AAA. Thomas leads Luton of Dowling 5-2, and Dowling's dim hopes for a team title are beginning to go a glimmer. And we'll check up on those team standings after this period on the two A's, which Emmonsburg has tied up. They're trying to get some personal glory here now for these young men. There's Emmonsburg way up on top. Oh, they are. You can see State Center moved on up just a half a point ahead of Cresco with that win that they had down there in those lower weights. So they moved into that third place trophy, trophy gathering position. Back to live action again at this double A match at 126. Ryland is on top here with a tie score 4-4. He started this period riding. That was a nice stand up by Steve Hamilton from Emmitsburg. Got to his feet, freed his arms, and has a one point lead and a three point lead on a takedown. But he came in a little high with his arms out. You know, just didn't quite get the arms in close, those elbows into the side. Hamilton just threw him past. So well, Hamilton has the, has the position now. He's up by three and in where he wants to be with that chicken wing in. He's tough with that arm. He bars it. And uh, Ryland has not been able to get it free. Stalemate. Referee Don Holmes felt that uh, that wasn't going anywhere. Well, in the eight. Schmitz from Don Bosco was winning his match three to nothing over Jeff Bakken from Northwood Kinset. You saw Hamilton react there with that shot for, his, for the big takedown to put him up by three. And with a minute to go, there's a warning to the man underneath. He hasn't made, he hasn't made his moves in continuity, so he's in a little bit of trouble with that. He's giving up that arm again. Well, it's a tough match over at uh, 3A. Now, Thomas at Davenport is only up by two. It's 7-7 seven, seven now, as a matter of fact, at 3A. And I believe that Luton of Dowling is getting back home. There's a nice reversal by Ryder. Just got a little high, Steve Hamilton did. Ryder just sat up, came out the back door. But he's still ahead on the bottom, 7-6. Ryder's going to gonna intentionally release him, try to get a takedown. It's eight to six, he has to have a takedown for a tie. And what do you know, Dowling is still in it. With back points, we'll hear more about that later. Luton of Dowling beat Brian Thomas, nine to seven. There's Ryland trying to get that takedown. And he's being held off, just, just being held out of there by Steve Hamilton from Emmitsburg. Doing a good job of just defending, basically defending himself. Now he gets called for stalling. Five seconds, only four to go. He hits that single to the side. He's got a free the eye of the wizard to score. He couldn't do it, and Hamilton is the state champion. Hamilton is the state champion from Emmitsburg by a score of eight to six. By the way, we were talking about Dowling. It is going to be Fort Dodge's title because the Dowling man had the pin. That's right, and he didn't do it. There's the winner. He's only a sophomore, so is Mark Ryland. You're gonna see a lot more from those two, I have a feeling. Yeah, I'm sure of that. The winner is Steve Hamilton. We'll go to 1A now to see what's left, just as we get there. But Jeff Smith from Don Bosco won himself a title. He's been in that picture there you know, for 
this is the fourth year, second, second, third, and out one. Now he wins it. And he won big, 12 to 1. He was, he was not going to take any chances this year. <laughs> How about that? There's and the, the catcher, coach the catcher again. <laughs> well, Don Mashek's caught a lot of them. He, Dan Mashek has caught, caught some big ones and some small ones. Here are the awards for 119 at Org for a floor report. Well, Doug, Don Bosco crowned another state champion here tonight. Jeff Schmitz, a 17-year-old senior, had been to the state tournament three times before, never got beyond third at 119. That was last year. But this year, a state champion as he defeated Jeff Bakken of Northwood, Northwood Kemsett, 12 to 1. At the end of the second period, it was only two to nothing, but he really poured it on in the third period, and Jeff Schmitz came off as the champion at uh, 126 pounds in Class A. What happened over on your map, Dick? All right, Dean, we had a barn burner at 126 and 3A. Ken Luton of West Des Moines Dowling was trailing. He came up with seven of his nine points in about the last minute and a half of his match. The final score, Luton nine, and Brian Thomas of Davenport West seven, and it was a fantastic and furious finish. Okay. Place Jeff Bakken, Northwood, Kensett. And the 1A 126-pound champion from Gilbertville, Don Bosco, Jeff Schmitz. Four times a place winner. This time, he's number one. Jeff Schmitz, Gilbertville, Don Bosco, whose team has won the championship here, too, in the 1A. Now the 2A winners are coming up. And we'll get... Uh, Another look at a Hamilton. There, this, is, this is Hamilton time, you know. <laughs> we'll get an interview a little later on with, the, with Don Mashick, too. Gilbert Hill coach, 126. Coach Clint Young of Emmonsburg. Sixth place, Brett Sweeney Osage. Fifth place, Mike Marino, Glenwood. Fourth place, Larry Kendall Albia. Third place, Jason Erhus, Independence. Second place, Mark Ryland, Eagle Grove. And the 2A 126-pound champion from Emmitsburg, Steve Hamilton. All that hard work paid off, and he'll be back twice more. They get a run of them going up there in that part of the country. Yeah, they sure do. Every once in a while, you see some, I think you can see the stars of the future and the stars of now in this tournament. 126-pound winners are being honored right now. When we get back to wrestling, we'll be at 138 pounds in double A. Now the winner's at 3A at 126. West Des Moines Dowling. Sixth place, Andre Scott, Waterloo East. Fifth place, Dan Nevels, Pleasant Valley. Fourth place, Jeff Black, Urbandale. Third place, Joe Witters, Cedar Rapids Prairie. Second place, Brian Thomas, Davenport West. And the 3A 126-pound champion from West Des Moines, Dowling, Ken Luton, who came from way behind right at the end to win his title. Now let's go to Dean Borg. 